All right, folks, just continuing on with our farm tracks installation here, uh, getting to the sensor installation. Uh, they didn't have uh, instructions specifically for a 1460. They did for a 1660. However, I know that the clean grain elevator is different between those two models, so they kind of give you some guidance as to how to position them. That's what I've taken advantage of. Um, first guidance they give you is the fact of getting it as high on the clean grain elevator as possible so you have less grain spillage coming down plus give the grain a chance to settle down on the way up the elevator and um, sorry about the light in the background you can get quite a bit higher up in here however to get access to drill your holes and get a drill in this is the location I went with that's easiest without having to take off the entire side panel here which isn't the easiest since it doesn't just swing out like it does on the other side. So for those of you tackling this on a 1460, what I went with, dimensions wise, they give you a Y in the next. Um, so vertical going from center line of your auger up along here in this direction was uh, 38, I believe 38 inches to get to there. And then distance from the back side of the elevator to the hole, perpendicular distance, I did at like 2 and 3 sixteenths. And one thing that I'm, I will just see how this works out, but I do have a little bit of a concern. Let's see if I can get my flashlight on it here. Um, if you look in there, that right there is your elevator chain. So you can see across hole to hole and I think it's pretty much straight back but that elevator chain the the drill chuck that they give you and the drill um, the you know that the chuck on it, it's a little bit bigger diameter obviously than the rest of it and the drill bit is just long enough or the perfect length that that drill truck centers up this way across your elevator which means the, the drill chuck is basically right next or into kind of into that chain it was at least touching it whether or not it was changing the position on the back side of the elevator i don't know again that was at two and three sixteenths from this edge so anybody else doing that you might want to favor just a little bit further out but um if you get if you reduce that dimension too much, like say one seven eighths or two, you start to get into the angled part of the paddle bracket, which they uh, specifically say you kind of want to avoid in order to get consistent readings. So, anyway, that's where we're that's where we're at. Um, got our drill the holes you, you punch this hole first and then they give you an extended chuck you put on then you're able to with a, a drill gauge um, or a drill guide they call it and then you're able to reach right through and drill to the other side so you don't have to worry about turning your drill around to get the back side and the clearance and there is just enough room on this back side you see i already got the these uh these sensor brackets are just held in place with like 3M tape and you can see um, that's not even mounted but there's plenty of distance to get the sensor in there uh, in this location on the back side so again just uh, anybody attempting to do this on a 1460 trying to help you out a little bit this is what I've done um, I'll be posting some videos should be in the future as far as whether or not it's it's working and the, the two and three sixteenths worked out so we'll see how the rest goes um, yeah all right folks uh, just update on next step on our uh, farm tracks installation here's uh, I call it the brain but the module uh, we got it on the back side of the cab here there's the driver's seat and the dash um, drilled some holes with a, a eighth inch drill bit and then I actually located that with some self-tapping screws uh, just holding that up there got the harness plugged in and started running the wiring uh, take the side panel off there is 
kind of conveniently sorry getting up on a ladder here but in it, right in this back corner there is actually a hole on the back side of this dash piece as you can kind of make out from where the wires are headed to actually get into this lower compartment here I just got the side cover taken off a um, little different in here than some 1460s maybe that module there is uh, backup camera and then I just have some other wiring for other accessories, the mud hog axle and whatnot we just put on. Might not be the cleanest, but it's getting the job done. And um, yeah, so we just tied their their harness comes with uh, an inline fuse adapter on it, so you don't have to use fused power. I'm stealing off another circuit, so it is fused power. That, um, that's a five amp fuse that's in there, so I think they say that it only pulls like one amp the system, so. Um, definitely does not hurt to have it on uh, another circuit so just a little bit more on the integration of how we're doing it uh, use the step drill bit to get a hole in the bulkhead here we'll put a grommet around that I just use the step drill bit so it's just barely big enough that the uh, the connector on the other side of that uh, bulkhead would fit through I did drill another hole for the antenna um, just so it could have um, up here it just kind of worked out better for me it can have its own grommet and probably seal up a little bit better rather than trying to have two things go through the same grommet which is gonna leave you a little bit more uh, well you can get it's just harder to seal up um, but anyway that's uh, some of the steps that we're doing that's our location the other area I thought about putting it was on the back side of the B pillar here. I um, already got my, the backup camera hanging there and um, I just thought, even though you can see that wiring now, I'll tuck it away a little bit better in the future. Just quicker to get out of the cab, not so much wiring hanging out, coming all the way back down to go through that hole down there. And um, having the module higher. There's a LED right there on the left side on the bottom of that box. Um, kind of, it's got different colors and it flashes or doesn't flash um, to give. That's that's your status indicator basically. So I just thought by having it higher in the cab, it's going to be a little bit easier to uh, see um, when when I need to. All right. Hey folks, just continuing on with our installation here. Sorry about the noise. The uh, grass is being mowed at the farm here today. So anyway, uh, continuing on with our farm tracks installation. Here is the external uh, antenna supplied by farm tracks, affixed to the top of the mighty 1460. Here's the head. And uh, just so you folks know, yeah, we're up here in the rafters, by the way, of the old shed down on what's going on in here sorry for all the motion but anyway uh, so yeah I calculate somewhere in the neighborhood of 16 to 16 and a quarter inches from the right side of the machine as you're looking forward is the center line of the head on top of the cab so I just put a little piece of hose here around this corner make sure that line don't rub through. Um, for those that don't have further bin extensions, you got some bolt holes for the bin extensions to use that I affixed the wire to. When I get down there, I'll finish the rest of that. So, uh, anyway, that's what we got cooking so far on top of the machine. Alright, finishing up our farm tracks installation here on the 1460. Uh, the sensors just uh, you just push them into those brackets and give them a spin uh, Basically every 60 degrees depending on how you want uh, this to be oriented you, uh, you can kind of do a little bit of Planning in the beginning if you're very particular as far as uh, how that bracket lines up on there and twist wise, but um, once you got it mounted on you basically have three different uh, positions so you can put it in for running the wire 
Uh, finding a safe place to run the wire on the right hand side of the machine isn't always the easiest. Um, so this is just kind of showing you how we've ran it. This kind of looks like a mess right here only because I do not have the moisture meter on the back of the grain elevator yet. So I just have that lead uh, coiled up there. Um, that goes on the door at the bottom of the elevator. But uh, yeah, I just kind of ran it up along the back side, tried to stay away from chains. I uh, went all the way up to the top and then I wrapped around the elevator. Uh, stick with me here for a second. That came to the front side of the elevator. I kind of like these uh, these tie stra heavy, little heavier duty tie strap. Uh, has those holes in it and then you're able to take smaller plastic ties and do to those and really locate the wire as well so I don't know if you can see but once I put that strap around there I got some other smaller ties holding that in place right up there at the top and then I come over sorry about all the motion but basically on the back side of the right hand body you got these support brackets form a natural little hole in there behind the body panels follow those up and along up into the corner and once you're into the corner I was able to secure it to secure it to the wiring that goes out there to your uh, turn signal right hand turn signal and the lights so and then follow that path into the cab so that's where we're at. We've buttoned everything up, side panels back on the machine, and uh, powered up the we power, powered up the brain, and everything seems to be working. Obviously, we have to calibrate it, and we'll know more when we get into the field. And it wouldn't do a GPS connection in the barn here, which makes sense. The old metal roof, but uh, we're getting ready to pull it outside, and we'll see how. Make sure that functionality is there. So anyway, um, and then I also too still have to test the functionality with the two and three sixteenths position, like I mentioned earlier. Um, make sure that, which is uh, I think as simple as turning the unit on, the power light I, I believe will come on, and then um, you can either turn on the machine or just give a yank to the belt there, get the machine. Uh, moving, you know, get some paddles passing by, and I, I believe this light flashes uh, potentially when it's it's either on when there's nothing in the way, or it's on when something's in the way and a, a light passes by. So that's our that's our next move. Um, I don't know if it's the original chain or not, but in order to have the most accurate readings got the wrenches all out just got done uh, servicing the grain elevator here uh, getting it tensioned up she's a little loose and I noticed I have at least one paddle missing so I'm sure that will uh, get in the way of accurate reading a, a little bit to some extent we won't know until we get into the field and then uh, but so we have plans of changing that out and uh, since I got all the tools out to do that one, we're going to service this one. Uh, the tailings elevator, you can see this, this chain's pretty loose, so that's what we're getting ready to do. And then I got to ask on the forum, or somebody watching this video can chime in, but one thing I've noticed, uh, sorry for my finger there, so the elevator, the tailings elevator, Right behind the shaft, right back here, is this plate, which makes sense. It comes up, and uh, you know, so the stuff can't fall through to the other side, and then it rides on the paddle up to the top. Well, on my clean grain elevator, that plate is missing. However, the bolts and stuff inside, which I don't know if you can see, are good and tight, but it looks like there is a witness line of where the plate used to be. 
So I'm thinking at some point that thing came loose enough and maybe the chain caught it and ripped it out of there. And then my grandfather probably just tightened up the bolts, finished running the field, and found out, hey, that something works or something. And never replaced the bolt, or never replaced the plate. So that might be, uh, when we replace the chain, that might be a good time to put that plate back in there. So, all right, anyway, just wanted uh, to finish up with our installation here on the monitor the old monitor um, probably do a video in the future for installing the moisture meter but I think that's a little bit more um, straightforward based on their directions um, like I said with this installation really the only thing not accounted for is where are you going to put these sensors um, for this particular series of machines all right, Josh Ryan, Bain Umbrio Farms, Eaton County, Michigan. And uh, folks, you, I'm sure most of you are done with your wheat harvest, but we're getting ready to start up. And uh, hope you've all had a, a great harvest, and we'll talk to you later. All right, folks, just an update on the 1460 Farm Tracks installation. This is the moisture sensor goes in the bottom of the clean grain elevator. They have you put it in the door. Um, this is on a 1460, which doesn't have too wide a door. As you, you can see where the witness marks are uh, for the opening. Uh, the instructions will say to favor being on the auger side. I think that's just to make sure that it's adequately covered with grain the entire time. Um, but this door is so narrow I think compared to newer models perhaps that um, I basically ended up almost centering it it's favoring the inside direction of the machine just a little bit but not bad um, pretty easy to install they give you a template um, really the only thing you have to do once you have the template is <laughs> position it on there to get the position I was after Basically, the template was uh, hung over the outside edge here. Again, this is a 1460. Hung over the outside edge basically about a sixteenth. Um, and I don't quite... It's about in the... If you're looking from the outside of the machine... Hard to tell here. You're so close. But it's about the 630... Uh, almost 6 o'clock position now that I look at it again. Within the doorway... But when you actually put it on the machine, you know, put the pin in and get the door swinging, it's going to be about in the 630 position on the uh, base of the elevator itself. So just about in the bottom of the door here is where I have it. And uh, I guess if that don't work, I'll get another used door from somebody else. But according to their instructions or, you know, their advice and suggestions on how to position the thing, that's the best we could come up with. Uh, but yep, so just get your template in place. And then as you can see, I just used a center punch right through the template once I had it where I wanted to. I um, I drilled out uh, like an eighth inch. Uh, I used an eighth inch drill bit from there to make a quick pilot hole. They are going to send you in the kit this hole saw. Oh, I don't have the center in it right now uh, but yeah you just slide that inside there a little allen screw oh, a little allen screw hold it together but um, this hole saw is pretty aggressive so just be careful it'll try to break your wrist but uh, yeah it saws through there pretty fast it stays nice and sharp so no damage of that um, and then I myself obviously multiple ways that you could link the the edges here that you have to cut out um i got my grinding wheel on there now from finishing it up but um i just used a i used a cut off wheel just marked it with a marker and a straight edge and did the best we could but yeah so there's what it it looks like you just stick the base of the sensor kind of sticks through in order to leave the wiring on the outside 
you install these screws which all they do is attach to this metal plate the flange on there and then the back side of the screw sticks through even further and then you're able to slide on this plastic cover from the outside and then they got uh, nuts and washers to hold this on so the rest of the wiring is already in place from when we did the moisture meter uh, I didn't get the the moisture or, so, sorry when we did the yield monitor portion of this see I had lost some wheat during this and um, yeah, so there's the yield monitor again and then I just left the pigtail if you will or up here I threw some electrical tape over the end of it coiled it all up so all I gotta do is put the door back on and hook up the wiring and we'll be golden um, then we can start prepping the machine for soybean harvest um, which isn't too bad when you've already done wheat you know small grain to soybeans isn't too bad um, the auger covers change out to a screened cover so I got screen covers that go on the clean grain auger as well as the tailings auger um, I also have the screen covers screen doors obviously putting this moisture meter on I'm just going to use the solid door all the time now on the clean grain elevator and then the only door I'll have to change out is on the tailings and then there is a belly plate that uh, gets installed underneath the clean grain auger in the center of the machine that I need to take off and it just helps get rid of some all these changes just help get rid of the foreign material so um, <clears throat> I know we're kind of getting off subject here but just a further update um, every once in a while I apologize if it's not light enough in here to really see this but this little 15 foot head is prone to uh, plugging when I get into tall beans um, if I just leave the auger right down as far as it'll go it does pretty good but I think a lot of the issue from the build up was not having all my real tines I had sections where a lot were missing but we went through, we added some black plastic ones. I still have some holes in places, but at least there's no doubles and triples and quadruples left over for the most part. I think it'll recommend. Hopefully, uh, I don't know if it's going to help out or not. We won't know until we get into them because I don't know what the cause is. But you get into super short beans, and then the, the beans will cut off and then they just lay over on the table and they just build up build up build up build up and then all of a sudden they just come as a big bunch once the auger gets a hold of them and they come to the center and plug it up and this machine doesn't have a reverser yet another keyword there engineer this engineer is working on a way of doing that a little bit different than what you've seen in the past so i don't know if it'll work yet but if it does work, it should be a lot easier set up than what some other folks have. So, Anyway, Josh Ryan, Banabrio Farms. Yep, finishing up this farm tracks installation. And uh, so we can do a little bit of moisture metering on the go. And just uh, help, especially early in the season, I think, uh, get some idea. You know, when you're trying fields out, uh, give you a little bit of a idea of what you're getting yourself into and um yeah so you monitor it going across the field and all that stuff so anyway hope you guys are having a wonderful summer it finally cooled off a little bit up here in michigan and we had a great week last week 75 dew points in the lower 50s um i'm gonna heat back up though here but so that's where we stand and uh more to come we'll talk to you folks later